but I want to switch gears and I want to talk about your program today because you mm -hmm. really do help everyone, but let's focus on busy moms because that's who's listening here. Yes. We're all busy. Let's, let's talk a little bit about what are some of the things that we miss, April? Like, oh, what do we misunderstand about life, productivity, organization? Like, I am asking for myself self selfishly here, April. <laughs> like, help me help our listeners, but mostly help me. Like, what are we misunderstanding? What do you think the okay. big, biggest problems we face with this are? Yes, all right. So I use the analogy of a car to explain how a system works. If you are, I would say, most people are symbolically walking through life right now when they could be driving a car. Now, nothing's wrong with walking through life, but for most people, they're spending hours a week rearranging, apologizing, looking for things, right? Losing things, that's super normal. So what we do is we teach people essentially how you build a car. <laughs> we call it our command central. Now, you know if you had four tires and an engine in your driveway, it's great, but it's not gonna get you anywhere because you need the whole car. What most mothers have is just what they've been taught, which is like a to-do list and a calendar and maybe a stack of piles on the kitchen counter, right? I mean, that's really all you ever learn is, oh, you make a list and you have a calendar. So I would compare that to mothers only having some tires and an engine. They don't have the car. So what we do is we teach people, well, here's how you build a whole command central, which basically consists of things that are on your brain. So things like your calendar, your list, but organized in a certain way. Things you do on a weekly basis. It's incredibly important for every mother, especially if you're an entrepreneur, to have a weekly review, knowing what you're reviewing, projects, routines, things like that. And you have things that are totally off your brain because what most moms do is we keep everything on our brains all at the same time. So the things you wanna do 20 years from now and the things that you need to do next week and that piece of paper that needs to go to the doctor on Friday, but first you have to get a blood test and you've gotta make a phone call. We keep all of that. On our kitchen counters, and we call it flat surface disease, most mothers have flat surface disease. And so, and this is the norm. This is how I grew up. I totally grew up with an awesome mom who had flat surface disease. And so she'd pile everything in boxes and she'd move it to the back room when guests came over and then she'd move it all back out. And when you add digital clutter into that, most, most mothers are dealing with digital chaos where I can't even find that file. It takes me 20 minutes to find this one thing. And so we just end up wasting a lot of time spinning our wheels. So what I do is help people learn how you actually step back, build your system, and then every single idea, task, paper has a place in it as long as you do a weekly review and just keep up with routines. But what this has done is instead of me trying to be an entrepreneur who's like, okay, let me get all the kids where they need to go and everyone get out of the house and now my house is a mess, but I'm on the computer trying to do a blog or you know figure out how to build a business. Now it's not like that. Now we've got routines in place. Kids can go where they need to go. We all pick up the house together. I can sit down. I know exactly what I need to do to work on my business that day. I can go to bed at night with a clean house and emails at zero and everything's organized and I have no stress around the stuff. That's mm. the dream that I have for the world. Yeah, oh, that's so good. And you really do paint that picture so accurately because that's the reality we live in. You know, just this morning, um, April, I did a Facebook Live within our Business Boutique Academy group, and I'm just kind of doing some kickoffs for the week of like thoughts yeah. for the week. And I was talking about that exact thing, not even thinking about how mm -hmm. I was going to be talking to you today. I said, you know, I said, David Allen talks about this in his book, mm -hmm. Getting Things Done, of how we, your your brain is for having ideas, not holding <laughs> yeah. them. And it's when we try to hold them that we get very stressed yeah. and overwhelmed, trying to, exactly like you said, trying to think about all the things at one yeah. time. Well, one of the items on my to-do list, because I'm so guilty of this, and I was this was my thing for the Facebook Live for the Academy group, I said, okay, here I do this as well. We're going to stop doing it this week. Here's an example. On my to-do list, there is the line item, Conley's birthday. Mm. <laughs> Conley's birthday. <laughs> April, <a> project. sister. <laughs> that has 400 <laughs> to-do list yeah. within mm -hmm. that one thing. And so I think, you know, we just put down these cryptic notes yeah. thinking that's helping ourselves, <laughs> but then we look at our to-do list and your brain is trying to translate what the cryptic <laughs> notes mean, which then creates more energy and stress and the to-do list did not help us at all. So talk okay. to us a little bit about what, are, I know you have the command central, but you also have the difference between projects yes. and routines and tasks. <laughs> so give us that definition of 
of, of how and this I just works. Help Teach you us. with Conley's birthday. Do you want to just talk through that oh, for a second? Yes, okay. So please. first of all, yes. you need to have a list of Christie's current projects, and that includes three categories. So personal projects, that's stuff for you, things like, oh, I'm training for a race, or I'm you know trying to get in a better routine to drink green smoothies, or you know, something like that. I know you're super healthy. Sure. Then you have projects for yeah. your family. <laughs> so a family project would be Conley's birthday. That's where that goes. It goes on yep. your current projects list that you review weekly. And then beyond, that would be your work or someone who's listening, that's your business. And so you should have just seven or eight projects total through those three lists. I would recommend no more than three per category. So I have my personal list. I actually have mine hanging on my wall right here. But I have my personal list. I have my family list. And then for business, I only have two or three projects that I'm allowed to work on <laughs> during a certain time until it's done and the project leaves, then you can bring another one on. But so Conley's birthday goes on my family now. Going through your project planning, sitting down for 20 minutes would probably be your next action. To sit down and let's just plan out what we want for Conley's birthday. Let's do a project plan where you're gonna say, what's my outcome for it? Am I having friends over? Are we inviting guests? Are we keeping it small? Are we doing photos? Like, what, are we, what do we want for this? And you paint this beautiful picture of this vision for Conley's birthday. But then once you're able to go through and start separating it into these like little sub projects, like, okay, we've got food, we've got guests, we've got you know decorations, whatever it is, then you create next actions. And I'm actually gonna show you my next actions list. I keep this in my little planner. Okay, so can you see it? <laughs> it's organized by things to do at home, phone calls to make, things to do on the computer. And on the side, I have errands, things to discuss, and then this is my things to pray about. <laughs> I have a little list of things to pray about. Okay, so then what you would do is once you've put together your project for Conley's birthday, you'd think, okay, well, what's a very next action? What's something I could do this week in order to move that forward? So tell me, what's like one of the very first things you need to do? Do you have a date set? Okay, I do have a okay. date set, and I've done some things, but in no particular order, okay. as you can imagine, <laughs> right? Like, so I'm going on Amazon, I'm just buying some stuff, okay. buying some Mickey Mouse ears. I have rented Mickey Mouse, he's coming to our house, <laughs> I have made that, okay? okay. Um, uh, I have no decorations, no plan for food. Okay. Uh, and invitations, I have a digital copy and have yet to figure out how to print. So, you okay. can tell I'm right you in the You kind of have a lot of stuff going. So, you'd have all that right on your project oh, plan. Oh, sure. But let's say your next action was just to sit down and plan it. Do you need to talk with your husband or a party planner, anyone else? Oh, I guess I should. Shouldn't I now? I okay. guess I should. So, <laughs> so, maybe a good next action. This would go under <laughs> Matt Wright. Sorry the little this. heart. That's to discuss. I put things I need to talk to Eric about okay. right on there. So, you might I say, hey, it. before I go get planning and start figuring out this big party, mm. I need to have a discussion with my husband and go over the plans. And that's going to be done... Pretty Matt quickly. would love okay. this. This would be a so nice thing. So you put thing. it on your little list, but the way you remember to do it, this is something that you're just kind of checking throughout the day. I get a new one every week, sure. okay? But you make okay. a calendar trigger. So you'd think, okay, if I need to talk to Matt, I might not be able to talk to him today. When's the latest I could talk to him without feeling stressed about the party? Like, what would you say? Mm, okay. What date would you say? Well, see, okay, for Matt and I, knowing my husband, I could talk to him literally five minutes before, and I would feel great <laughs> okay. about it, April if we talk at all. My husband, however, we got to give him a good yes. runway. Like, he is a detailed person. He is cautious. So if I need Matt to make a decision on Saturday, for yeah. example, I need to start talking to him about Tuesday. Okay. So he can think about it Wednesday. We can talk some more Thursday. <laughs> think and talk Friday. Saturday, by God, let's make a decision. Yes. All right. That's how, that's how it okay, works. Okay, so then on <laughs> Tuesday, you have a calendar trigger for whenever you think you're going to be near Matt, right? Like end of the day, whatever. Okay, great. Saying, hey, yeah, this is my yeah. reminder. I need to make sure I've talked to him by today. But the beauty is once you have that calendar trigger, you know that's your next action. You've got your project details put together. Now you're not going to forget to talk to him. And once you're done, you can take the next, next actions. And you can say, okay, now that Matt and I are on the same page, he's actually going to take a few of these errands or a couple of these phone calls, or he's going to help me figure out how to print this thing. He's going to take that. Now my steps are I need to do this errand, this computer, and you just put it where it needs to go, and this fills in those little pockets of time that most people waste on social media. <laughs> so you put together a little idea. So that's just kind of a general overview, but the, the key is if you can separate calendar tasks from like the basics, I have nothing on my calendar except what I have to do that day. Then you have routines on autopilot. These are things like exercising and you know, tidying up the house with the kids, family prayer, um, checking your email, posting to social media, all those things that are your routines. Those are on autopilot, so they're on a routines list. I actually have mine, I'll show you. I have my routines spelled out here, daily, weekly, <laughs> monthly, quarterly, yearly, kind of put them all together. But that's a little way you can have routines kind of on autopilot, or you could put them onto your 
Com uh, there's lots of digital uh, resources like Asana I use for routines. But routines are autopilot, not on your task list. And then your projects, simple, focused list, and you have a feeder list for projects. And the reason this is important is because let's say someone comes to your business boutique and they're getting so many ideas and they go to five classes and they have all these conversations and they leave with a ton of notes and about 40 projects that they want to do. So what happens with most of us is we go home feeling like, well, now I have a longer list. <laughs> now I just feel stressed. <sighs> then you don't even want to go get ideas anymore because you feel like a vacuum cleaner that's totally stuffed that hasn't been cleaned out. You're like, I've been sucking in so much. I'm not even able to process it. So what you do is you take all those projects and you put them on your next in line or your someday list. Or if there's one you got, you think, okay, this is going to change my life. You put it on your current list, but you get everything else off that's not essential. And what this does for you is it enables you to then read and listen to podcasts and go to conferences. And you're continually growing this next in line and someday list but then what happens is the best ideas bubble to the top. That is how I've been able to invest in conferences all over and use them to actually go into my business and start earning an income that could sustain us. I love it. I love that advice too, because so many people ask me a lot of times, April, they'll say, okay, what's the first step in business? What's the first step, you know, depending on where you are, what's the first step coming out of the event? And as you know, we give a wide variety of content and teaching and inspiration, but we do that on purpose because the goals that you come in with are different for every person. They're different for every business. They're different for every business owner and her goals and her challenges. So um, if I say, you know, your very first thing is to fix this with your calendar, well, that may be true for someone that's struggling with their time, but someone else that's struggling with making money and profitability or hiring team members, these things affect each other. And so I really want to help people figure out what's their first step. So I love your advice there to say, okay, what, what is the most important to me? What's the most important to my business? With everything I've learned here in the last three days, these are the things that I'm going to do immediately first priority that's going to make the most impact. So that's such great advice. And like you said, you have a resource for us, which we will put the link below in this podcast and also in the show notes for this episode. So I'm so excited about yeah. that. April, I know people uh, want to know more about you and I could yeah. talk to you all day about this stuff, certainly, <laughs> but specifically Learn, Do, Become. How can they learn more about what you're doing and your STEPS program and all that good stuff? Yes. Okay. So learndobecome.com forward slash step. That will take you to a page where you can sign up for our free class and you can go through it at your leisure, go through exactly all the four steps that can help you at least get started. And then if you want to know more, we'll send you a link where you can come join our Steps to Everyday Productivity program and community. And it's just, it's so much fun. But what I love is as Eric and I are growing this, we're growing this for impact. I want people to just learn a step or two if that's where they want to be. Some people are emailing me. I just got a message last night on Instagram. A girl's like, I really want to be part of step program. I'm working on that. We're saving up. We can't wait, you know, because it's an investment, which is great. But when I see people who are coming in, learning, being part of the community, we're here to serve and help. And I, most of all, I just want people to feel hope because I know the feeling when you feel like I'm alone, I'm failing. I'm struggling, I'm exhausted, I can't keep up. Like, I know that feeling. We have this picture of me, I've gotta go find it because I was laying flat on my face on our living room floor because Eric and I had just launched our first business. As prior to this one, it was like 10 years ago. We launched our first business and then the checkout didn't work the day we launched. And so no sales were coming in at all. And I had been working for months and we'd invested thousands of dollars. And I just laid on the floor and just put my face in the carpet. And Eric was upstairs and he took a little picture of me from the top, just going, we're going to remember this day. You know, we're going to remember. And of course, I get it. I understand when you feel like, well, I haven't found my thing or it's not taking off yet or I haven't learned how to market. I, I totally get it. But what I will say is there are people out there like what Christy's doing teaching you step-by-step step what to do. And the people you will meet at these types of conferences, the people you'll meet in the Facebook groups, people you meet online in these programs, they're going to help you start directing you to show you, well, here's what does work. Here's how you could start making a profit really quickly. Here's how you could start seeing impact. Or here's how you can pivot because that idea is maybe it's not resonating. So let's do That's some right. surveys. That's let's right. figure out what you can do. But there's always hope and there's always help. And whatever I can do to support you, I'd be happy to do. April, I love it. I love your story and the impact that you're making through your business, through Steps, through Learn, Do, Become. But what I love the most, just specifically with My Heart for Business Boutique, is that you are such a shining example 
of a mom that did it. Like you took mm -hmm. that brave step. It started with Wednesday writing nights. And I don't want people to forget that. Yeah. I don't want people to forget that 12 years ago when you were face down because your <laughs> you know, payment system didn't work, that you still kept taking brave steps, even if they were small steps, even if they felt like really unimpressive steps, <laughs> like writing a Microsoft Word document on a Wednesday night that no one would ever see, that when you're faithful in the small things, God will give you big things. And uh, you certainly are so deserving of all the success and impact and your heart shines through everything that you're doing, April. And that's why it's working because you are in it for your customers, for uh, your followers and your tribe. And they feel that. And uh, if it, you know, when someone's not, they also feel that. And yeah. so uh, you really have made such a difference. So I, watch, I love, I love watching you shine. So thanks, and I know you're so busy, by the way. So thanks so no, much for taking so the time to hang out with us today. I so appreciate thanks it. Thanks so much, Christy. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you need help taking notes at your next conference or the Business Boutique Conference, you can click the link below to get April's note-taking guide.